On Wednesday night, we started from here, Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3. And what we did, we reestablished our vision boards. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we want a visible goal and God, hallelujah, for what we're believing God for in every area of our life. Amen. Hallelujah. And it will surely come to pass hallelujah as what you believe god for hallelujah is ever in front of you i want to remind you of the fact it will come to pass amen hallelujah if you're there i'm going to read from habakkuk chapter 2 verses 1 2 and 3 i'll read out loud and i ask that you please follow along with me it says this i will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me. It sounds like what you said about prayer this morning. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but the end at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. I'm going to read the first portion of verse 3 again where it says this. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak. Hallelujah. I want to tell you this morning, the vision speaks. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing king. Hallelujah. The vision speaks. Amen. Hallelujah. On the last message that we preached, amen, we came from the place where it says, Behold, all things are become new. Everyone that is in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things are become new. And we talked about the fact that behold means to see what you can't see, to see what a thing can be. Amen. The word behold, hallelujah, has the same meaning, amen, as the word vision. A vision, by dictionary definition, is a vivid mental image, especially for a favorable future. To see what the future can be. And then it gives these, def these synonyms. Amen. Hallelujah. We're talking about the vision that God has given you. It will speak. Hallelujah. It will not lie. It will come to pass. The vision that God has given you. The dictionary gives synonyms of creativity, in inventiveness, Imagination, innovation, inspiration, intuition, perception, insight, foresight, pre-signs, dreams, plans, goals, hopes, reverie, fantasy, all these things. God has placed it in you because there's so much that God wants to do for you. Hallelujah. As the preacher said, it's the window of heaven being open and you can't even see it in your ma imagination what God wants to do for you. For you until he shows it to you that's what the vision that god has given you is is god giving you a sneak peek of what he wants your future to be amen hallelujah the future the vision is something hallelujah eclectic is prophetic hallelujah it's the it sees the invisible it grabs a hold of the intangible and it in expects the impossible Amen. Hallelujah. These are three things that happen when you have a vision. Amen. Tell somebody, I got a vision. Hallelujah. A vision sees something when your eyes see nothing. 
A vision says something when you don't have nothing. It's called a vow. And a vision sows something even if it's in little bitty increments because that's all you got until the vision comes to pass because you believe in your heart of hearts. It will speak and will not lie. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And in order for the vision to speak, I got to speak to the vision. Yes, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In order for the vision to speak and not lie, I've got to speak to the vision. Amen. 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 Go to Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. I want you to see. I want you to see what God is showing you in your sanctified imagination. It's necessary for you. Amen. Hallelujah. It will speak and it will not lie. It will come to pass. Surely it shall come to pass. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. Once you get there, let me say hallelujah, I'm there. Hallelujah, I'm there as well. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 18. It says, I mean chapter 29 verse 18. It says this. Where there is no vision, where there is no creativity, imagination, innovation, inspiration, intuition, perception, insight, foresight, hallelujah, plan, goal, purpose, dream, hope, reverie, where there is no fantasy, where there is nothing that you look forward to in your sanctified imagination, the Bible says, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. You got to keep your vision alive. Because the Bible says if you let your vision, your hopes, your dreams, your goals, your plans die, the Bible says that we die with it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We got to make sure we keep it alive. So you got to speak to the vision. So the vision will speak. Amen. Hallelujah. See, many people are just existing and not living because they don't have something that they're looking forward to, to think that this is what God is going to do for me. And therefore, they're just going through the motions. Going through the motions. You got to keep your vision alive. Speak to it because it will speak. Hallelujah. You got to ask yourself the questions. I have to ask myself the questions every now and then. Amen. Because as I was looking at my vision board, my vision board looked a lot like the vision board I made before. And I haven't seen some things that I put on my vision board come to pass. I'm still believing for a building. Not just because we need one, but because, hallelujah, the world needs to see, hallelujah, God manifest his glory in the earth realm through us. I'm still believing God to, hallelujah, release ornament of grace publications, amen, hallelujah. I'm still believing God, amen, hallelujah, for the things that I've been believing for for a while so I had to ask myself these questions I had to ask myself am I still hungry amen am I still expecting what I said I believed God was going to do amen hallelujah am I still dreaming amen because if you're not dreaming you'll find yourself reaching for mediocrity if you don't stay hungry you'll find yourself satisfied with crumbs 
You got to make sure you continue to speak to your vision so your vision can speak and not lie. Amen. The vision can't speak until you speak to it. Amen. Hallelujah. So what you got to do is teach your mouth to speak the promises. Even, even when you're struggling to believe them. You have to speak to the vision. Amen. And talk to yourself. And tell yourself, remind yourself of the promises of God. Hallelujah. Until you believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. What is our confession of faith? Our confession of faith says people are standing in line. When you look with your eyes, you don't see people standing in line. To get into this church, to hear the word of God, every seat is filled in every service. When you look around, sometimes you don't see some empty seats. Hallelujah. But what you got to continue to do is speak to the vision, even when it feels like you're lying. Because you're talking to the vision to keep it alive. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. Hallelujah. My wife says, I believe it. It will come to pass. Even if you don't believe it, say, it will come to pass. Hallelujah. Because if you say it enough, you'll start to believe it. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to ask this. How many of y'all have ever told a lie so long that you started to believe it yourself? <laughs> well, it works that way with the truth as well. If you speak to what God has shown you, it will come to pass. Amen. Amen. Oh. Woo, hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. You put the word in your heart. Then out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Then faith comes by hearing when you hear yourself speak the word of God. So faith comes out of your heart when you speak it. Faith comes into your heart when you hear it. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So faith comes out of your mouth. Hallelujah. When you say it again. And then faith comes into your heart when you hear it again. You feed your own faith. Hallelujah. By speaking the word of God. Hallelujah. Over and over and over again. Hallelujah. You got to speak to your vision to keep it alive. Oh, hallelujah. 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 It's speaking to your vision. It's the breath of what you say and the circulation hallelujah of keeping it going amen hallelujah in the hospital what do we do hallelujah when something is dying we continue to breathe into it hallelujah and we keep the circulation going amen that's what we got to do to our vision you can't let the vision die before the vision will speak and not lie you got to continue to speak to the vision teach your heart what to believe by teaching your mouth to speak the promises of God. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 16. Amen. Amen. I've been told the richest place on the face of the planet is the graveyard. Because that's where most people take their visions. Most people's potential dreams goals are buried long before they are because they don't speak to the vision they don't talk to themselves and remind themselves of the promises of god you got to teach your mouth to speak the promises even when you can't see it even when you can't feel it, 
Hallelujah. Teach your mouth to speak the promises. Proverbs 16, 23 says this. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth. Hallelujah. My son did a video on wisdom on Facebook. You need to check it out. But if you're wise, if you're prudent with understanding, hallelujah, with the desire to know God and love God and fear God, hallelujah, if you want to know who to do it with, how to do it, when to do it, hallelujah, where to do it, if you're somebody that wants the plan of God for your life, you'll teach your mouth what to say. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. Because when you teach your mouth to speak the promises of God, you train your heart to believe in the potential of the future. Let me say that again. You, train, you teach your mouth to speak the promises. And that's how you train your heart to believe in the potential of the future. Amen? Amen. When you think of the three manifestations of time, past, don't think past, present, future. Think past, present, potential. Because there's so much that God has in store for you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Go to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, verses 1, 2, and 3. Because I want you to see why you got to train your heart to believe. Why do we have to train our heart to believe? It says this, and, the time, and this, at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Competing and comparing right there in the presence of Jesus. Amen. I think in another verse of scripture where it talks about the same occasion, then mama stirred the whole thing up. But we're going to leave that alone. <laughs> and Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. See what? Children know how to do is make believe. See, you got to teach your mouth what to speak to train your heart to believe so you can make yourself believe. Amen? And the reason we got to train our heart, the reason the believing is not automatic is because life has made us skeptical, cynical, sarcastic. People make us suspicious. Amen. Hallelujah. And we've been lied to, scandalized to the point that we think everything's a lie and you got to prove it true. You don't believe it until you see it half the time. Amen. That's the way life has caused us to believe. We got to teach our heart to believe again. Amen. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You better watch out. You better not pout. You better not cry. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. And we take the kids to the mall and they sit on Santa's lap and he, they tell them everything they want for Christmas. He got it. <laughs> and we set cookies and milk out at night and all these things. And then when we get older, we start to wonder well, if Santa wasn't seeing everything, is God? everywhere and seeing everything yes, sir. if santa wasn't 
didn't get me everything I wanted for Christmas. Will God hear me and answer my prayers? And we, we lose sight of how to believe because we've been taught to disbelieve. You get taught to disbelieve when you don't get everything on the list. When you pull up your pillow the next morning and the tooth is still there. And, <laughs> and see, all these things cause you to question and wonder, can I believe? You got to train your heart to believe because believing is not automatic you got to train your heart to become more like a child that believes automatically amen amen children believe automatically we got to get to the point where we believe this word automatically Let's go somewhere. I want you to go to Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 because I need you to see why you need to believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. We got to make believe. We got to make ourselves believe. Amen. We got to override the natural suspicion that causes us to question and wonder and doubt. I got to learn to make myself believe. Hallelujah. Because what God has for me, I need to believe it in order to receive it i can't let doubt fear unbelief cause me to back down from what god has promised me i will believe the promises of god hallelujah because what god has shown me is too much for me to do without me believing amen philippians chapter 4 verse 19 it says this but my god shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory amen hallelujah we discovered right there that in order for us to enter into the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of heaven is a place it's not just the place that we go after this life but the kingdom of heaven is a storage place it's where god has some things stored up for me and in order for me to enter into what god has stored up for me i got to hallelujah see and believe that it will come to pass. What God's trying to give me is stored up in the heavenlies. And I got to believe in order to receive what he has for me. I got to train my heart to believe. Amen. Hallelujah. He didn't say he would supply my every need according to my wallet or my pocket. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough to do what God has shown me that he wants to do. Hallelujah. But in his piggy bank. Whoo, hallelujah. His streets are paved with gold. The pearls, the gates are made of pearls. Amen. Hallelujah. Precious stones make up the foundation of the walls around his house. Amen. Hallelujah. God could just throw me a brick from where he lives. Amen. And that's enough to supply my need. I need to believe God. Hallelujah. I need to believe God. I got to train my heart to believe. I got to train my heart to believe. I got to teach my mouth what to speak. Speak the promises of God. Even when it don't feel like it. Even when I don't see it. Even when I don't believe it. So I can train my heart to believe in the possibilities Whatever you do, don't leave here disbelieving. Whatever you got to do, you got to make yourself believe. Hallelujah. Believe that it will come to pass. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8, it says this. And God is able 
to make all grace abound toward you that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work you got to believe you got to make yourself believe you got to train your heart to believe because you can't receive what God has for you if you don't believe the Bible says God is able that's the might of what he wants to do to make all grace that's the means by which he's going to do it abound hallelujah that's the movement toward you is the momentum hallelujah i love that hallelujah because that reminds me of the fact that once god does this for me hallelujah the grace is still rolling and he's going to do that for me and he's going to do that for me and he's going to do that for me that you always have an all sufficiency in all things. Hallelujah. That's the measure of it. God's measurement is all. Hallelujah. May abound to every good work. That's the ministry that God wants to bring through you. The means for every good work work you got to train your heart to believe so you can receive the might the means the movement the momentum the measure and the ministry of god's grace that he has assigned for you you got to make yourself believe train your heart to believe go ahead and say it i will believe I will, I will believe. believe. Hallelujah. Pastor Jerry and Shavella Gadsden welcome you to attend worship services at the Ornament of Grace Christian Center, 121 Express Drive, Suite C, Lansing, Kansas. Join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. My Bible says, hallelujah, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. For more information, call 913-240-6262. The Ornament of Grace Christian Center, where God's grace is sufficient for you.